For Hype Plus News, I'm Terrence Sims. Now more than ever, many celebrity personal lives are subject to public scrutiny and dissected for the world. We love them for the entertainment they provide, but sometimes it comes at a cost to them. In recent years, we've seen a spike in deaths caused by overdose, and fentanyl has been at the center of the calamity. Many of our favorite musicians, movie stars, and prominent figures were among those devastating numbers of deaths caused by this powerful substance. Although when we think of those with fame and fortune, we see the glitz and glam, the reality is that their lifestyle often leads to drug use, be it from emotional or physical pain. Many times our favorite celebrities become addicted to drugs, knowingly or unknowingly. In 2016, fentanyl became the leading cause of overdose deaths in the United States. In the same year, synthetic opioids like fentanyl were involved in nearly half of the opioid-related deaths. A 14% increase from 2010. At least 88,000 people died in the 12 months leading up to August 2020, a 27% increase from the year before. According to the CDC, the cause of those deaths were fentanyl. Fentanyl is a synthetic opioid, meaning it's produced in the lab instead of naturally occurring and is prescribed for severe and chronic pain. Fentanyl is 100 times stronger than morphine and 50 times stronger than heroin. Continuous use of opioids make the brain less sensitive to the drug, making it hard to feel pleasure from anything else, thus leading to the addiction. The effects of fentanyl include extreme happiness, drowsiness, sedation, problems breathing, and unconsciousness. An overdose of the drug can lead to hypoxia, a condition that decreases the flow of oxygen to the brain, which can lead to a coma, brain damage, and even death. The illegal use of fentanyl, be it through a doctor with fake prescriptions or as an additive in other illegal drugs, can cause countless accidental deaths. It is extremely dangerous for those who don't have a tolerance for the fentanyl or other opioids to unknowingly consume it. The drug unfortunately took the lives of these next few celebrated artists who passed on much too soon. These are some of the greatest to ever live who died of fentanyl. Shock G. Gregory Edward Jacobs, professionally known as Shock G, was frontman and founder of the iconic hip hop group Digital Underground. Jacobs was known for his many alter egos, including Humpty Hump, which spawned the legendary song and dance, The Humpty Dance. On April 22nd, 2021, a manager at the Vista Inn and Suites in Tampa, Florida, found the 57-year-old unresponsive in his hotel room after he became concerned when Jacobs missed his checkout time. Gregory Jacobs was pronounced dead on the scene. Days later, the Hillsborough County Medical Examiner revealed the cause of death to be an accidental overdose of fentanyl, methamphetamine, and alcohol. Although Jacobs would prove to have a successful career gaining fans across the world, the entertainer's drug use was an ongoing battle. His sister, Elizabeth Racker, called him a genius in his own way and revealed to the Tampa Times that, usually what comes along with that is, sometimes they struggle. In the months leading up to his death, there were multiple incidents reported regarding the former rapper's erotic behavior, which stemmed from his use of methamphetamine. In one incident, he was taken into protective custody under the Marshman Act, which voluntary or involuntary puts the individual under evaluation or treatment if their addiction puts themselves or others in danger. Shock G's death was mourned by loved ones, fans, and his rap peers. Michael K. Williams. He made a name for himself in 2002 through his highly celebrated role as Omar Little on the HBO drama series, The Wire. Michael K. Williams was a beloved actor who stole the hearts of many with his memorable on-screen performances. The Emmy nominee was born and raised in Brooklyn, where he also took his last breath. An adolescent marked by molestation, bullying, and crime led to Williams' experience with drugs as early as 19 years old. He wrote in his posthumous memoir, Scenes from My Life. Once crack cocaine came into my life, it just moved the fuck in. Everything else took a back seat. An identity crisis while portraying Omar from The Wire intensified the actor's substance abuse. In an interview with Inside Jersey, Williams revealed that he lived a double life while shooting the second season of the acclaimed series in 2004. On the days that he wasn't shooting, he would go on binges, days at a time, using crack cocaine in New Jersey. The When They See Us actor only got clean after meeting a pastor named Ronald Christian, known from his flock as Reverend Run, whom Williams credits with helping to kick his habit through the mentorship. Unfortunately, sobriety wouldn't stick for Michael K. Williams, and he continues to struggle with drug addiction. On September 6, 2021, he was found face down in his luxury Brooklyn apartment. He was pronounced dead soon after investigators suspected that the cause of death was overdose after firing heroin on the kitchen counter. The worst was confirmed on September 26. Much love Michael K. Williams had passed away from using a combination of cocaine, heroin, and fentanyl. Four men were arrested for their involvement in distributing the drugs that would claim Williams' life. Of the four was 71-year-old Carlos Massey, who was sentenced to two and a half years in prison. 
NYPD detectives were urged to treat Williams' overdose as a homicide after it was alleged that the men continued to sell drugs even after learning that their fentanyl-laced heroin had killed Michael K. Williams. U.S. Attorney Damian Williams said in a statement, deadly opioids like fentanyl and heroin don't care about who you are or what you accomplish. They just feed addiction and lead to tragedy. Mac Miller. In August of 2018, rapper and Pittsburgh native Mac Miller released his fifth and final studio album, Swimming, before his untimely death in September of 2018. On that day, his body was found by his personal assistant and sobriety coach and pronounced dead of an accidental overdose. Cocaine, alcohol, and fentanyl were all present in his system at the time of his death. Three men were charged with supplying Mac Miller, whose full name was Malcolm James McCormick, counterfeit oxycodone pills that were actually laced with fentanyl. A judge sentenced Stephen Walter 17 years for distribution of fentanyl, which carries a mandatory minimum sentence of 20 years in federal prison. Although Mac Miller was open about his struggles with substance abuse and even documented in his music, his loved ones confirmed that in the days before his death, he seemed happy as ever and eager to live. In a victim impact statement read by prosecutors at the sentencing, his mother, Karen Meyer, said that he would have never knowingly taken a pill with fentanyl. This was a human being who unwillingly took something that would flat out kill you, and I have no idea why we have people out here dealing in this stuff. Telling in this stuff, this is what upsets me. Coolio. The Compton raised rapper who rose to fame after his Grammy winning single, Gangsta's Paradise, often battled with cocaine abuse throughout his career. He was no stranger to the cycle of recovery and relapse. He checked into rehab in 2009 after pleading guilty to drug possession. And in 2015, he confirmed his sobriety in an interview with Sway Calloway. I can truly say now it won't happen again. First of all, I'm way too old for all that shit. If I start doing that shit again, I probably would kill myself. The charismatic rapper will ultimately succumb to his vices in September of 2022 at 59 years old. The coroner's reported listed the primary cause of his death to be the effects of heroin, methamphetamine, and fentanyl. Coolio, who was born artist Leon Ivy Jr., died in his friend's bathroom of an accidental overdose. The coroner's report also listed that he was suffering from asthma, cardiomyopathy, which is a disease that can make it hard for the heart to pump blood, and had recently used psychedelic PCP. DMX, the renowned rapper DMX, opened up about the origins of his drug use in an interview with Talib Kweli back in 2020. Born Earl Simmons in 1970, the Yonkers native revealed that at 14 years old, he hadn't done any drugs until his mentor, Reddy Run, passed him a blunt laced with crack. His battle with addiction will unfortunately continue throughout his life until it consumed him on April 9th, 2021. On various occasions throughout his celebrated career, Simmons would cancel concerts to focus on his sobriety and enter into multiple stints of rehab. In 2011, the hip-hop icon had good stretch of sobriety and accredited his children for being his motivation to stay sober. But addiction and recovery, as you may know, is not linear. And this fact was ever prevalent in DMX's life as the drug use, criminal charges, and rehab stints will continue until the fateful day he was taken to White Plains Hospital in critical condition. DMX had suffered a heart attack that was presumed to be the result of a drug overdose. The next day, he was on life support and in a vegetative state. A week later, the beloved Rough Rider was pronounced dead at 50 years old. The details of X's overdose came out after his death, revealing that the rapper apparently had a lethal mix of crack cocaine, fentanyl, and unknown amounts of alcohol and pills in his system at the time of his collapse. Simmons' 10-year-old daughter, Sonova Hillman Jr., is set to produce a four-part docuseries on how fentanyl and the opioid crisis affects children and families. In a YouTube video promoting the series, she said, I lost my aunt and uncle to a drug overdose and my dad to addiction. Fentanyl is affecting every gender, race, class, and age group. Prince, on April 21st, 2016, we lost a world-renowned singer, musician, producer, and entertainer Prince Rogers Nelson, professionally known as Prince. A shock to fans all over the world, the legendary singer's killer was none other than the dangerous, powerful opioid fentanyl. Most people who knew Prince personally spoke to a drug-free reputation. He wouldn't even allow drugs and alcohol in his home. But it was also known throughout his very close-knit inner circle that the icon struggled with physical pain accumulated from his intense performances over the years. Weeks before his death, Prince worked closely with his doctor, Michael Schellenberg, who prescribed him many different painkillers under the name of his security guard, Kirk Johnson, which he claimed was for Prince's privacy. After a two-year investigation, it was discovered that Prince had developed addiction to prescription opioids and suffered from withdrawal. 
but counterfeit pills and pills stored in improper containers were found throughout his residence during the investigation. Prince was found unresponsive in an elevator at his Paisley Park studio compound in Minneapolis. An autopsy found he died of an accidental overdose of fentanyl at 57 years old. Authorities say it was likely that Prince was taking the drug unbeknownst to him and it was laced to look like Vicodin. No one has been charged with his death, but Dr. Schulenberg paid a settlement of $30,000 for illegally prescribing oxycodone under someone else's name. The source of the fentanyl is yet to be determined. We have lost so many incredibly talented and iconic figures to addiction. But more importantly, mothers have lost sons and daughters. People have lost their closest friends and children have lost their parents. These drugs don't care about who you are or what you have and they will only destroy you. Here at Comedy Hype, we encourage you to be safe and to be aware of what you are putting into your body. We're sending love to anyone who has lost a loved one to drugs and we hope the names that were mentioned and all the others are resting in peace. If your use of fentanyl is affecting your health, family, relationships, work, school, financial or life situations, or you're concerned about a loved one, you can find help and support. Call 1-800-662-HELP. It's confidential too. Stay up to date with the latest news and comedy by subscribing here to our YouTube channel. Follow Comedy Hype across all social media and look out for original content on our new streaming service at ComedyHype.com. For Hype Plus News, I'm Terrence Sims.